You're listening to the Game Tenants Podcast. What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Game Tense Podcast, the failed adventures of two gamers and the quest for Gamecast stardom. This is episode 40, and I am Church, also known as the Game Grinder, and as always, joined by my excellent co host, Jason from Corpse Flood. We are back, finally. Yes. I think you you had like a, a tagline or something. Oh, we are over the hill now with episode 40. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, so... Well, 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 uh, you know, something about us being the least attentive game tenants? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay, we're the least attentive. Yeah, but we are back after a month. Can't say we, we haven't been trying. Um, last week was an unfortunate turn of events on your end. Yeah. <laughs> which sucks. And then yeah. uh, the week before, I was really sick. Still kind of sick. Well, I'm fine now, but uh, still have some lingering symptoms of the bog in the chest. But you know, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, no one stole my vehicle this week, so yeah. <laughs> we can uh, effectively do this. <laughs> that was really unfortunate last week. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before we jump into the other opening segments here. As per lately, we will cover some uh, community comments that we got on the last episode of the podcast, and probably would help if I remember what the topics were. But we'll just we'll just go right down the list. Oh, we were, we were talking about the uh, new Bubsy game coming out, and <laughs> among the among the other games coming out, and how everyone seems to randomly just hate them all when they're not terrible games. They're just kind of yeah, you know, yeah. they're games. Yeah, yeah, they're games. And uh, Black Metal Gamer was saying that he played Bubsy 1 and 2 and he didn't care back then. And and uh, he has them on his pie and he still doesn't like them. So, you know, like we said, not for everybody. I'm not going to defend them, but uh, I'm not going to hate on them either. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm super curious. I haven't really watched... Uh, I think I watched an initial, like, trailer when they first said, hey, we're coming out with a new Bubsy game. And I don't really remember much about it. And I was like, you know what? Just for posterity reasons, I'm going to pre-order this game. So I will be really interested to see what they do with it. Because, yeah, the, the first two, you know, they're games. Not really anything great about them. Not terrible games by any means. But I, you know, back in the day, for me at least, every chance I got to get a game, regardless of how bad it was like I played that game to the fullest and enjoyed it because you know we didn't know any better and you know and that might be all you have to play for the weekend so you gotta <laughs> buck up and play it terrible or not yeah right right so yeah. and then uh, we were also talking about uh, fighting games and uh, and the games that I had been working on and playing and we talked about Tekken 7 and he is also a fan of it and said it's its favorite 8th gen fighter behind Killer Instinct. So, that's yes, cool. Yes. So, we, we both thoroughly enjoyed it. Maybe you'll have to try it sometime and weigh in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my group of friends that I used to play Tekken with, like, that's, you know, a lot of people played whatever fighting games. My group of friends was primarily Tekken. So, um, very well versed in the series, but nobody really seems to want to play those games anymore. Most of my friends now play pretty much strictly online games or, you know, other random stuff, not really these sorts of games. So who knows, maybe someday I'll get around to it. I will say I am super interested to check out Killer Instinct ever since I came out. I thought it looked really cool. Some really neat features, but, um... As is, I think I'm, you know, as long as they keep coming out with these Mortal Kombat games, at least, yeah. I'll be set. The NetherRealm games are definitely nailing it. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, big time. Uh, I, I, yeah, I really wasn't gripped by Killer Instinct, but uh, I think it was just the part that it was free 
initially and you got like one character and then yeah every other character you had to buy i mean i got lucky for being a long time xbox gold subscriber they ended up sending me like the a code for the complete first season or whatever so mm -hmm. i got to i got to try it out more in depth and it was good and stuff i had no problems with it but it just didn't grip me like quite like mortal kombat x or yeah. tekken did anyway moving on yeah, so then we got a comment from BioPhoenix uh, talking about uh, Yakuza Kwame. It says it's still still a good start since it was originally the first for most people. And then he also commented on Bubsy, said they weren't great, but they weren't uber terrible. Although he hears the same one is made by the same people that made Super Gianna, or I think it's Gianna Sisters, or Gianna yeah. Sisters. Or Gianna, uh, yeah. I think it's Gianna, Gianna. Thank, thank you. Um, and that game was uh, awesome. So, and he says, uh, it's weird the game is making a comeback just like sh the Shaq Fu game, which I haven't heard anything about the, the Shaq Fu like, remake in a long, long time. I haven't really seen anything since the announcement trailer, yeah. which looks ridiculous. Right. Well, I, think, I think the thing with Bubsy is that 3D was so bad it cast a shadow over the other ones. Truth. And just kind, yeah. of, and just kind of gave it like an umbrella of like, yeah, that's a terrible series. Well, and if uh, you're going to do that to mascot platformers, shouldn't uh, Sonic be looked upon as a terrible game <laughs> series then? You know, by now, I'm, I'm actually thinking he must have more bad games than good, which is oh, absolutely sad to say. But there are there are some really awesome ones, just kind of yeah. mixed in. But yeah, a lot of really bad ones. Yep. So, so maybe give uh, every game a chance. Yeah, for sure. And then I, I think we're talking about. Um, the last episode, the anniversary of Final Fantasy VII, 20 year anniversary. Yep. And uh, Bob Phoenix also says, weird thing is he never played Final Fantasy VII until 2006 and he really liked it, but he played six and nine before them and liked them better. But of course, Final Fantasy VII did have some great stuff going for it and might be his third favorite in the series. Well, there you go, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's got everyone's got a different favorite, and it usually ends up being one of those three. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, and mine is so. <laughs> Sweet, cool. Um, and then we got a comment from Boss and Burf, and he says, "You know what sucks worse than Final Fantasy VII haters? People that bitch about how her name should be Aerith." And I, I used to have a friend back in the day that he was like super annoying about that because. Like when the game first came out, like he was more involved with reading gaming magazines and like early days of like internet forums and stuff. And he would tell us all the time that it was Aerith and that we were saying it wrong. <laughs> um, then he also said he was hyped for the remake and the fact that it looks like a, it may be an action RPG kind of turned him off. Uh, he doesn't like the fact that it'll be episodic. They had no problem making the original into one long game, so why can't they do that with a version, this version as well? Yeah, I really I think, are, are they scared to make multi-disc uh, PS4 games or what? Yeah, is it? I don't know. Like, is the big difference development costs of uh, then well, compared to now? Because I know now they're like just bloated and inflated as hell, and that's like putting the, all their eggs in one basket. But at the same time, like it's, that's it's, probably the best way you're going to go about it because you're going to get a lot of people who will not buy the game until it's all finished yeah and that's going to have a big effect on their development if they're banking on those bucks from you know the people who get the first episode well if you're going to bank on it then do it right right uh, if you do this right it'll print money it's almost a guaranteed money game just like you know a zelda game you make a good zelda game you know they're going to make money off it you know right. you make a good i don't know just any game if you totally if you go about it the right way and it's a well-known series, you're probably going to get your money back. Yeah, unless sure. Unless you do it wrong, you do it lazy, you do it sloppy, you release it unfinished, then yeah, you're going to get what you deserve, I think. <laughs> and I I would really hope, I mean, they're, they're seems like they're taking their time with it. Uh, you know, they, they shifted... The studios, because it was some um, external studio that was working on it, and they brought it back in-house. So maybe that's a good sign that they're doubling down on their efforts. Um, 
Well, it's their baby. They better take care of it. I I hope so because well, oof, it, I, the 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 potential backlash they could face for like ruining like kind of like one of the most like praised games like ever could be oof. huge and really? massively detrimental to the company. Well, really, what series does Square have that's bigger than Final Fantasy? They've got a lot of big series. Well, Dragon but, Warrior, or Dragon, you know, Dragon, Dragon, Quest. Quest. Dra Dragon Quest, but that's not that's not as big as Final Fantasy. Like that's their big one. That'd be like you know you're not going to see Nintendo outsourcing Mario games right anymore <laughs> after they tried with the CDI and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that is true. And then uh, also we. I, I believe at some point before we've talked about this, but the the action RPG shift for f the Final Fantasy VII remake is something that I you know I don't I prefer if it was still turn based, but as long as the story and the characters are there, I don't really care too much. As long as it's, as long as it's a good mechanic, yeah, really, if, yeah. If it plays fine, I really don't have a any quarrels with it. It doesn't have to be the exact same game. It doesn't have to be so reimagined that it ends up being like the GoldenEye remake where the levels were only the same in name and absolutely nothing was similar. Yeah. That was a bit of a, a bummer. It was still, I still enjoyed the game, but it almost didn't even need to be called GoldenEye because it was like so far from the original game. Right. I mean, you kind of have to. That game will seem dated if you just put new graphics on it. It'll just look like crap. Yeah, and then uh, we had a comment from S Smash, just the ongoing discussion, or Smash GT, sorry, the ongoing discussion that we've had of uh, uh, appreciating each other's uh, content and shout-outs and thanks and all that. So, again, big thanks to Smash GT. And anybody listening, all of these commenters have YouTube channels, Black Metal Gamer, Bio Phoenix, Boss and Burf, and Smash JG, and I encourage everybody to definitely check them out. Good They're channels. much more active than my channel. All <laughs> of them. All of them. I think he puts out 56 videos to my one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So I'm going to get back into it soon. I just, yeah. Absolutely. You're getting there. Getting there. Yeah. But other than that, uh, what's been going on? Well, I've been playing a lot more games lately, which is great. Uh, besides our uh, our our game hunting, oh I've, yeah, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've to mention we, we mentioned that on the last episode that we were going to be hanging out for the weekend. That uh, Jason was coming down, and we we're going to do some game hunting and check out the concert, and we definitely did that. And we it worked out awesomely. Yes, uh, it was. You were an awesome host and showed me around all the cool places to eat and cool places to <laughs> purchase games. So that was awesome. For sure, yeah. Uh, uh, we went to, let's see, we went to Tor Troy Riffic in Maplewood, Minnesota. And then we went to the new Level Up location in Egan. And... I, I don't remember the exact name. There was a collectible store that I'd never been to that used to be by a place where I used to live. Uh, I think it was Toy... It was called, like, Go Collectibles and Toys? Yeah, I think that's what it was called. That was actually vegan. my favorite one, but it wasn't just for, like, video games. It was, like, a little video game section in the back and then, like, figures. Yeah. I My wallet cried when we walked in there. There was so much cool stuff from all my nerdy passions. So yeah, it was a lot of stuff from like all generations of action figures and toys and they had some comics uh, they had of course you know any collector shop these days has to have like magic cards and things like that so it's a cool yeah, little shop cool. yeah I definitely want to go back there if I next time I can well not if I, I will be back down uh, yeah. so yeah I'm definitely gonna save some money just for that store I'm <laughs> sure I got a yeah. middle of the middle of the road thing while we were there I got those the uh, Nika Contra figures, so so yes. I, I, I played to both my passions there, and they were on sale. Like I can say no to that anywhere I've ever seen them. They've been like at least fifty dollars plus, and they had them for twenty nine ninety nine. So yeah, essentially, it's 
for anybody who might not know, they're they're basically just contra action figures of uh, the two dudes. Contra dudes. Contra dudes. <laughs> um, and then the last yeah. place that we hit, just because we kind of ran out of time, was a uh, high score in high score games in Woodbury, Minnesota, which I hadn't been to that particular location. I've been to their other locations, but not that one. And that was surprisingly they had a pretty good selection i yeah, thought it was pretty cool we went to uh yeah we went to all different ones from the one uh ones we went to last time i was down uh, except for toy rific because we met at toy rific yep because that's uh near my aunt's place so it was a ideal place to meet because it's a place i can find easily yeah so so it was fun got a got a lot of cool deals there and, and pretty much everywhere Yes. Well, it was cool. You always, you always know where all the cool stuff is. I try. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, besides that, I've been picking up a couple other new releases. And we played some PlayStation VR while I was down there. And yes. had some fun with that. That was cool. Yep. For my, my first time playing the PSVR, um, pretty much just played Until Dawn Rush of Blood, uh, which. I definitely want to play more. I hear a little, I, I saw some things since then that says that read that later on in the game, like things connect more to until dawn, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool sounding. And then uh, I just checked out a little bit of resident evil seven in VR, but I was starting to kind of get a little motion sickness as well. I, yeah. I think maybe if I had more time to acclimate to it, it might, might've been better but yeah you, you, you tend to get a little bit more used to it like i i find that i can play a little bit longer each time before i start to feel crappy yeah, but, uh, and i was talking to a friend about that and he i haven't i haven't like done any further research but he was talking about how uh that's actually kind of like a bigger issue with vr right now is the the motion sickness and kind of the the feeling of like vertigo and stuff that people get. And he was talking about how he read some articles about um, the big difference between not necessarily like standard games in VR. It's more a difference between real life in VR is Mm -hmm. the lack of a visual staple. So the way he described it is like, you know, as a person, like, what's the one thing you see all the time? Your nose. Your nose, exactly. And in VR, there's nothing like that. So there's nothing for your body to kind of, like, lock onto and orient with. And that's kind of where a lot of that, like, vertigo and motion sickness comes into. Which oh, okay. kind of uh, sounds very very believable. I hadn't done any further research, but apparently there are uh, some companies and people making VR software that are messing around with some ideas like that to try to give some sort of anchor for people to make use of while they're playing these games to try to, you know, help with a lot of those side effects, which is kind of cool. Okay. What What I was thinking for, at least for Resident Evil 7 would be like, Taking the right stick right out of the okay, 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 holy equation, uh, because I found like like I was saying, if I turned right and I'd be looking at something, mm-hmm. you'd also have to like turn your body to like start walking over there. Whereas I feel like if you just pressed forward while looking that way, it would just like kind of almost like tank control. Sure. Where we would just like automatically start going that way. Yeah. That would that would make it a lot. I think a lot easier. Could, uh, definitely and removing like, motion blur there should be no motion blur in any vr games no and then, yeah. i mean there shouldn't be motion blur in any video games because i think it's a horrible fucking visual thing and i don't understand why developers think it looks good because i think it just completely ruins any game's visuals yeah but, it makes it all muddy yeah uh, but yeah that, that's one issue i wish they uh, you could like take care of because i found that's what made me uh, sick would be when I was turning and then I was also having to turn with the right stick. It mm-hmm. would just turn super fast. Like it was like snap almost. Yeah. So that, that's where that, that's where it made me sick. So like that's why I said uh, I stopped unless I was like standing still 
then I would look around. But if I was just playing, uh, like walking around exploring, I would just keep my head forward and look around with the stick. And then I found that that mm -hmm. worked a lot easier and uh, I didn't get as dizzy or whatever. So yeah. I don't know, like I said, like, after a while, like you said, after a while, you get more acclimated to it, and then you can kind of work. It's almost like an endurance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, anyway, besides that, the uh, the newer games I've been playing, I finally started Near Automata. Yes. A, a, a few days ago, and it is definitely deserving of all the praise it's getting. I'm about, I'd say, about five, six hours into it now. Okay, and, and I'm uh, I'm really enjoying it, like every aspect of it. I like the varied combat, as I was telling you. Like, there's like shmup parts. Uh, there's side scroller uh, parts. Yeah, the side scrolling parts is the yeah. It's like 2.5D or whatever, where it kind of feels like a almost like Contra or yeah. Gunstar Heroes or something. Uh, and then I think the the little pod that you have that you can mm -hmm. just have shooting all the time, and then like the Melee, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Devil May Cry ish. Uh, yeah, for sure. Playing, playing uh, I really, yeah, I'm, I'm loving everything about it. The music is awesome and memorable. Uh, yeah, just the story is cool so far. I'm, yeah, I've just been exploring the hell out of the, the world that's in it. And it's just, it's all just really interesting to me. So yeah, I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to playing more of that. Uh, also, recently I picked up Raiden 5, the director's cut for ps4 i picked it up uh, last week and i loved that game as well sweet uh, if you're not r familiar with the uh, raiden series it's a huge shoot 'em up series they've uh they've been around for quite a while and and i don't think i played a bad one yet they're uh a little pricey to get a hold of if you don't get a hold of them close to when they come out but uh definitely get a hold of one of them if you can uh five was awesome as as with most shoot 'em ups, the only downfall is that you can beat them pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but the experience was well worth it, and I played it through it a few times. Uh, there's different difficulty levels and all that stuff. You get an infinite continues either way, but you know, it just it basically spaces out how often you die. Uh, I actually really like that because there's a practice mode where the other ships won't even shoot at you. They just kind of fly on screen. Mm -hmm. And I made it perfect to play with Araya. Oh, cause sure. Because she, she's only five, and, you know, if she dies too much, she'd probably just get really discouraged. And, yeah. And then like, we worked up, and I, st I put it on easy, and so she got more used to playing. It, it was it was really cool. So uh, it was it really made it more uh, broadening, broadening of the audience, I guess. So No, that's I mean, actually really cool that they put in um, a feature like that yeah it's pretty it's pretty awesome so like, yeah we, i mean it was a little boring playing through with no one shooting at you but yeah. she, i mean the visuals of like all the lasers flying everywhere and all, all the different power-ups you could get uh kept it interesting she really loved the just the intense always on action mm -hmm. of it. you know the, the story in between and there's like to the sides of the screen there's like all these uh there's the commander and uh his secretary or whatever, like they just talk to you throughout the your missions to tell you what to do. Honestly, I don't pay much attention to them because I'm just blowing shit up the whole time. So uh, I might have to turn down the sound effects more to hear them better. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, mainly you're just concentrated on shooting everything. It's it's what it's doing what a shoot 'em up supposed to do. You shoot things a lot. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So anyway, I was really impressed with that. I, I was, as I was saying to you, I need more games like that. It's definitely a good uh, game you can just pop in and play for an hour or two and feel like you got some progress to it. So in my life, that was most welcome. Um, and then besides that, my other newest game that I've been playing is Star uh, South Park, The Fractured Butthole. Yes, and I'm about four and a half hours into that, and absolutely loving it. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm, I have it. I'm just waiting to play it. It is great. I can't wait till you get into it, so we can start talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone else playing it, but it's uh, it's just as good as the first one, if not better. I don't. I can't really stack the two up because I haven't beat it yet. But mm -hmm. it's 
so far it's cracking up to be just as good as the other one. Uh, awesome. It's varied and interesting and hilarious as always. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a little bit different in some ways like that. Combat's more of like a strategy RPG, but it still plays a lot like the last one at the same time. So it's, it's uh, definitely keeping me interested. So I'll be probably playing through that before I go back to Nier, but then I definitely plan to keep going with Nier because it's awesome. Anyway, yes, yes. what have you been up to? Yeah, so um, just connecting to the Nier discussion, I just wanted to mention something that I thought was kind of neat and uh, just my reinforcing of how I think, you know, if people see a game like Nier Automata and like, hey, that game looks interesting, should I check it out? Absolutely yes. But where I'm going with this is there is a, another uh, gaming community uh, for any longtime listeners. We had um, Musty Hobbit on an episode of the podcast uh, last year, and he had mentioned the Cartridge Club, which is a really cool community. Um, all all kinds of people, content creators, non-content creators. They got a forum. You know, they talk on social media, videos, all this stuff. But uh, I listened to the Cartridge Club podcast, and uh, one of the hosts, uh, P1, it's P1 and P2, uh, he was talking about um, another podcast that he had listened to where they were talking about near Automata, and the guy on this other podcast said that he finished Route A in near Automata, and he's like, okay, well, that's that's sufficient for me. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to move on. And as a person who played through the whole game, I was like, no, you can't. You, you gotta, you really gotta play through the entirety of Nier. So basically what I did is I went to the Cartridge Club forums. I wrote up essentially like uh, a two-page uh, case essay. for why, <laughs> yeah, an essay for why I firmly believe anybody who plays Nier Automata should see the game through to the end. And by the end, um, if anybody who is might not be familiar with, so Nier, and I kind of mentioned this before, Nier takes a really unique approach to how it handles like the start to finish of the main story. And it, it's a lot of it's tied into just kind of like the stylized presentation and particularly, I, I guess, how the designer or director Yoko Taro does games. He does things differently. And kind of like I mentioned uh, in regards to Gravity Rush 2 is you play through the game so many hours, you play through the story and stuff, and you hit an ending. Like, they give you credits, the game's over. But when the game's over, they actually put up a disclaimer, uh, which I didn't really think about before, but I watched a video recently, and I thought that was a really good inclusion to kind of key people in. But I don't think it, it does as well of a job as saying, hey, continue on with the game. So essentially, you get the ending, you click continue, and the game doesn't necessarily start over, but it starts from the other perspective, and then you play through that. And then that gets an ending, and then the game progresses on from there, and then that gets an ending. And then, so, like, it's not hard. Like, there's not really secrets to play through the entirety of the story. But, you know, I included timelines I, or graphs to show, like, this is how a standard story is presented. You know, start, finish, conclusion, rise in action, climax. And then nears is like five different lines because it's like goes to here. And then, oh, it steps back a little bit and then goes to here. And um, him, or so P1 actually had mentioned uh, about my, my post. And there was another um, podcast a new podcast that I've been introduced to masters of unlocking and uh, one of the co-hosts on there was uh, pretty much talking about the same things I was. And he's like, yep, these guys basically convinced me and I will sit down and I will finish near. So I want to say very cool, really encourage everybody to check it out. And if you haven't played through the entirety of the game, which is essentially getting endings A through E by pl just continuing through the game, like, you gotta do it, because it goes from being a really cool game to being, like, 
an amazing game. And as I've kind of been going with is it's kind of like, as is I I'm, I'm leaning, really leaning towards it being my game of the year. So yes, near Automata. I love it. The year is not over yet though. Right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So there is that. Um, besides convincing people to play more near, uh, as I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm still kind of on my, my YouTube hiatus. I'm still finishing up my home improvement stuff. I got the main bulk of my project done. Now, really, I'm just at the point where I have to do some things to get my game room moved. And then once I'm done with that, then I'm kind of done with the home improvement stuff. And I can finally just kind of get back to just doing whatever I want. Um, but with that, and especially with um, Jason coming down and visiting and getting a lot more game pickups, I think in the next few days, I'm going to try really, really hard to film a pickup video. I think it's going to be probably a really long pickup video unless I just kind of breeze through and don't talk about a lot of the games too much because it's been about three, three months or maybe four months since my last pickup video and my pickups, even though I've said I've slowed down, which I have, I haven't got as many pickups, but I still got a crap ton of pickups and I want to be able to say, this is what I got. Not worry about getting those mixed up when I move my game room over and just kind of getting everything shelved and stuff. And then hopefully maybe that can get the ball rolling again for me making videos again. Cause I'm kind of starting to feel the itch, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I'm kind of enjoying the break. So it's kind of a weird place to be right now. Yeah, I'm always in setup mode, it seems like. <laughs> I, uh, I have, it's been almost a year since I did a pickup video, and I have got a massive amount of games in that time, meaning yes. I could probably fill the next year with just like a weekly pickup yes. episode without even, sure you could. without even buying another game. It's... It's yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of sad, but I mean, at least I'm getting to start chipping away at the pile now and play them. And when I built the new shelves, I actually took pictures of everything that w was a pickup before it got mixed in, so yeah. that when I do make the videos, I can pull it all out and film the video, but not also have them just laying in a pile on the shelf. Right, There's some things they can actually go with. You know, I was actually able to envision something for each console's section on the shelves without being like, hmm, oh yeah, but I also have to save 30 right. spots for PS4 games here, you know, like, so. Which is pretty much where I'm at because I, I have a huge, I put all my stuff, like when I get new pickups, I put them on the side and then when I do a pickup video, then I add them to the collection. I, I, you, wit I witnessed this, I witnessed this. <laughs> and if you, and you were trying to show me a thing, but you had to like Jenga it out, from like, yeah, yeah. You, it's you, you had it very neatly piled, but it was not very accessible to everything. So yeah, yeah. it's almost like I, there's almost like a bookshelf worth of games. Yes, and that's exactly yeah. where I was at. And yeah, and not including like the consoles and stuff. I was just like, I have got to do something about this, and that's when I decided to make the uh, <laughs> stuff. Up. Yeah. So that was a. Uh, that, that, that definitely needs to happen sooner rather than later, but it seems like every time I'm just about ready to start filming something, I, yeah, get, I, get, a, I get a string of late night shifts or a lot of stuff needs to be done around the house or I also have a bunch of bins in my room that I have to go through and find something to do with. And <laughs> this and that. A lot of it's self-inflicted, but yeah, we'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. For sure. and, and I'm still... I'm still kind of holding out to make the computer before I start making more videos so that I got more power in my arsenal. Yes, yes. And so, uh, one thing, too, in regards to like kind of like a ba backlog of pickup videos is, and I, I can't remember the channel name off the top of my head. Um, from what I had watched of the channel, it's kind of been a little while. I've, with just me being busy, I haven't been able to watch as many people's videos as I used to. So I hope that's changing as well, and I can kind of get back on more track supporting people's videos. But this guy, 
his pickup videos were actually like each video he was talking about like specific pickups from like a year or two years ago. Like I remember watching one video, it was a brand oh, new video. He just uploaded it and he's talking about like a game convention from like a year ago. And he's like, Oh yeah, this is what I got. And uh so you know was it something like something a, that's doable. Was it a series called like a My Best Pickups or something like that? That might and be he, it actually. And he was reflecting on like this epic garage sale from like five years ago even a that couple of things. I wonder if I'll, I think have, to, I'll, I'll have to look that up. It sounds familiar because I think uh, I watched uh, some videos like that too where he was kind of like going like, oh, before I had a YouTube, I made these massive, awesome pickups, but they couldn't be documented. And honestly, I could do a series like that because a couple of summers ago, I was just... <laughs> the, the people, track of everything. Yeah, like, I'm, like if my wife didn't know me, I'm sure she would have thought I was a drug dealer because I was always on my phone or I was <laughs> like, I'll be right back. Slam because I, I was always running out and doing a pickup or coming home with a bunch of stuff, big leaving with a big bag, coming home with a different big bag, and, <laughs> like thinking I'm doing like, drug swaps or something. Yeah, and, right, right. We'll leave with a briefcase, come back with a duffel bag for like, sure, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, so yeah, it was it was a pretty nuts summer. It was part. Yeah. It was definitely my best for my retro collection because I would just be coming home with like duffel bags at NES and Super Nintendo games. But now that I'm doing YouTube, but like, I got a couple. Yeah, you know, I get two at a time and three at a time. I mean, once I mean, the more you get, the harder it is to find stuff you still need to. So for sure, gotta keep that in mind. Anyway, yeah. go on. So besides the the YouTube and the pickups and home improvement, uh, I have been doing some gaming, which is great because things kind of slowed down there for quite a bit. Of course, I still periodically play some Friday the 13th, uh, the game here and there. It's just, you know, easy game to just sit down and play a few rounds and, you know. For sure, that, that's why I like about Battlefield. Like, oh, I, I always used to just pop on and play a game at night before bed or something. Yeah, when I don't got any time to, like, actually, like, try to invest in a game. But um, I kind of had a good little spurt over the last week, and I... Uh, picked up and completed Hellblade, uh, Senua's Sacrifice, which is a, a very, very cool game. Very story-focused. Um, I've heard people complain about the combat system, but I thought it was I thought it was fine. Um, it, it, is, it really is a story-heavy game, uh, especially with the presentation and uh, kind of like their big deal is how they um, demonstrate... Um, I can't forget the exact wording they used for like, essentially the, the, the main character is like, hears voices, like she has dementia or whatnot. And it's how they present it. Like fascinating stuff. I actually watched a little feature at, on like how they made the game, but awesome game, really cool, uh, ties in like with heavily with like, uh, Norse mythology, um, yeah, so definitely, if anybody was curious about the game, I would say definitely worth playing. Like, another one of those games that just make 2017, like, this amazing year for gaming. Like, there's not many games like this. Uh, just so, so well done. And came from a pretty good studio, as far as I'm concerned, same people that made Enslaved Odyssey to the West and Heavenly Sword. Um, All right, on. Um, yeah. How about how long did it take to beat? Hellblade wasn't a super long game. I want to say it was like, um, I think it was like seven, seven hours. Actually, let me look real quick. This just take me one second. Hellblade took me nine hours. Oh, there you go. Well, not every game needs to be a sprawling hundred hour open world game, but right. And that's one of the nice things about it was like, okay, I'm going to squeeze this in because it's not a super long game heard nothing but good things about it so let's just do it and get it done with and i know a lot of times i'm i drag my feet about digital only games but every once in a while i am gonna just kind of give in and i'm gonna check out a digital game in hopes that eventually there will be a physical version and i'll pick it up you know because the game's great and if nothing else i'm just gonna doubly support the company moving forward so definitely i'm re i'm still gonna hold out waiting but i uh I really want to play it too, and I might eventually cave. 
Yeah, but I, yeah. I need to get I need to get through these some of these physical games before I worry about that. <laughs> right. I mean, essentially, that's where I'm at most of the time. But uh, pretty much as soon as I finished Hellblade, I uh, had to jump on the the popular game of the moment and uh, picked up Cuphead, which I completed last night. Was it last night? No. Yeah, it was, it was last night because I was starting South yes. Park. So, um, yeah, I played through Cuphead. Uh, I know a lot of people have heard about it. You, pretty much all you hear is about how difficult the game is, which it's a tough game. Uh, best... You know, really the best description I can give it is it's just, it's NES hard, where it's just memorization. That's all it is. Like, there is some skill factor. Like, if you, you know, have, you know, 10 thumbs and you can't push buttons, you might have some struggles. But if you understand how to play the game, it's just a matter of memorizing the patterns. Um, the game switches in between, it, it's primarily just boss battles for the most part. Um, but each. Each of the areas, the main areas, has a few what they call the running gun levels, which are like your more Contra. traditional side scroller platforming level. Like Contra type yeah. level or Gunstar Heroes ish. Well, yeah. It is a uh, it, it's definitely definitely a challenging game. We'll test will test anybody's patience. Uh, I kind of a lot of times if the game is what I well you know cheap or like bullshit like. That will piss me off, but when it's a legit, like, you know, presented a fair challenge, whether it's tough or not, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, after I finished the game, you can load your game back up, and there's actually this fountain you can go to that'll tell you how many times you died, and I died 284 times, and I know some people have fudged in numbers, because apparently if you... If you don't die and you go to the menu and click retry to just start the level over again, those don't count as deaths. So I did, and I didn't know that, so I figured those would count as deaths anyways. So anytime oh, I legit. like instantly messed up, like I wouldn't just restart right away, even though I wanted to, because I was like, well, I'm gonna get a death anyways. I might as well, you know, get more practice in essentially. So, you know, yeah. So that's that. Uh, this is more this is more legit. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's that's how I roll. But uh, I would really like people to really, like, when they talk about Cuphead, let's focus on what truly makes this game amazing. And it's the art style. It's the animation. It's the ins absolutely insane amount of creativity. Like, everything is just bizarre and total throwbacks to that old you know, 1930s animation style. Everything is animated. Everything is moving. Like, well, that's what drew me to it immediately. It, it's, it's, it's wild. Like many times I, when it comes to like so many games, I really just wonder how, how people are able to come up with stuff. But then you get some of these games that are just like, so, you know, out of left field, like Cuphead, like were these people just using like, massive amounts of drugs to like come up with all these ideas because it's just constant like it's it's wild like one of the last uh sections there's kind of like uh in some ways you can kind of call it a boss rush it's not a traditional boss rush where usually you get you play a game and it comes into a boss rush where you'll fight a bunch of like previous bosses yeah like uh Streets of Rage style, where like yeah, yeah, you, you beat where, a boss, and all of a sudden they're just like a regular, like enemy in the next yeah, level, sort of. But this, like, it has like essentially to get to the main boss, you have to like p go through like a variety of like random. There's some randomness to it of these other bosses that are kind of a little bit easier than normal, and like it, and these fights are like kind of a lot of, they're a lot faster than normal fights just because you have to fight like you know potentially like eight or nine mini bosses before you get to the main boss so they keep the they keep it you know reasonable and you know some of these fights are over in like you know 30 seconds or something but every single one is just there's no holds bar like full animation no skimping like <laughs> the, the the creativity is just 
it's it's amazing absolutely amazing and you know even the music like it's it's legit like old school ragtime jazz like every song in the game every level has its own music like they don't repeat you know the same boss music for every boss fight like every boss fight has a different music and like i said the game is primarily boss fights so there's like I, I i'm not even sure how many levels there were like 30 or something it, it's 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 amazing fantastic game uh if you don't have patience for kind of the memorization deal trial and error like i could see people struggling with it but if you take the time don't get frustrated just you know understand that you do you will have to figure things out you will make mistakes because the game does require precision at times but i think most people can get through it oh yeah that's uh like i was saying to you i'm i i wanted it from the second i saw it yeah, the yeah. i heard about it because i absolutely love that type of animation that's what makes a lot of those cartoons so timeless is just how crazy yeah. uh, creative they are you're like how did they yeah these guys are on drugs like I know, the, I, the I, dream I, sequences I, and stuff and the yeah, yeah. You know, especially if you watch like the, like the Halloween themed ones. They're just actually yeah. spooky looking because you're like, that is so creepy and like, how did you even come up with that? Right. And that's that's what I was looking forward to coming into this. But, but as I was saying to you, like, since it's come out, that's all I've heard about is that or the SNES Classic, and I'm just like, <laughs> it, I'm almost in burnout mode and I haven't even played it. Yeah. Because I didn't I didn't get a day one. Uh, I keep meaning to, but like I said, I've got these other games that I just bought, so I gotta. I feel like I gotta play through a bunch of those before I, I can get it, and I think by then, I'll feel like playing it because like I, I've had that like I, I think I mentioned it before with Fallout Three. There was a guy that would not stop talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, and it just put me right <laughs> off. Even though I already owned the game, and I was like, yeah, I just didn't get to play it yet because it came out the same day as Gears Two. Right. So I was playing Gears of War Two first, and then I was gonna go on to it, but then he like talked so like we could not change the subject away from fallout you'd be like oh yeah these iron man comics and you'd be like oh yeah man and anyway so in fallout 3 and he'd be like <laughs> we're like oh my god i was tired of hearing about a game that i was hyped for so it's almost like how i feel with cuphead right now is just when everyone stops talking about it i'll probably i'll be more uh more hyped to jump back into it yeah yeah for sure and totally understandable Totally understandable. Yeah. Great game, though. I will say, absolutely great game. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad that it's good because if you know, especially with the weight that was put into it, like it seemed. I think they pushed it back like another year to make it. Like yep. I always say, when they make it, when they take longer to make it, they're taking longer to make it a good game. So right. I'm glad that absolutely. it worked out, and I'll be picking up hopefully sooner rather than later, because I still really, really want to play it. But like I said, just everybody talking about <laughs> it and. In, even like even the memes are everywhere about it so i'm like <laughs> yeah i i will say though like uh and i'm sure you and anybody listening has seen the meme but i i love this meme it's a little two panel comic of cuphead and it says what's the matter little fella bad at lit bad at video games <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I, do just like I, I do like the memes. Are ridiculous with the the difficulty thing you know there's the whole I actually shared a video, so if anybody hasn't seen this video, uh, I would say check it out because I think it's funny. Uh, there's a, a, a group, Mega64, you know, they do a lot of those game parodies and stuff. They yeah. did basically this big parody video of the Dark Souls News Network where all they report on is things that are like the Dark Souls of whatever, just making fun of that whole meme thing, which I think is an absolutely terrible meme and people need to come up with better ways of like describing things. Cause I, I don't, I don't really understand the comparison there because dark souls is the pinnacle of hard, hard or whatever. Like it's absolutely it's, it's, not. That's, like, just, I think, that's just someone who's only played dark souls. Apparently. Right. Right. Yeah, I would say like contra hard, you know, like compared to a game that's like it. Yeah. And but, you know, something like cuphead, like I think one of the things that really helps make besides the art style and everything but like the actual challenge of cuphead that makes it something that is uh tolerable i guess is the the quickness of getting back in the game 
Like you can be back at, you know, starting the fight over like within seconds, which is nice compared to like, say the old NES games, which what made those games hard was a lot of times is when you died, you needed to start the entire game over or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Where you can easily, you know, uh, say one, one boss fight, you can die 20 times and, you know, oh, it's only been like, 15 minutes. I mean, it, that will happen because you got to figure out these patterns and stuff. But, um, yeah, no, meanwhile, that's, the, 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 the punishment isn't as extreme as some other games. I will definitely say. Oh, I definitely get like back in the day when you, you'd be doing awesome. Then also you get to a boss and you're like, how do I even beat this guy? He just clobbers me. Yeah. He's like one, he one hit kills me over and over. And, you just have to like, oh, whatever. I'm just gonna play up to that point and get better at that before part of the game, and hopefully I'll beat this guy this time. Yeah. Nope. nope. I didn't beat him again. Okay. Here's another 45 minutes of playing to try again. <laughs> like. Right. So like, yeah, that's definitely something that is a benefit of like the newer technology. So, so I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. people. It's it's just lazy. Calling everything Dark Souls hard. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, I'd be like, um, you'd be like, that'd be like you doing all your all your house renovations and being like, oh my god, this is like the Dark Souls of house renovations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's that's why I say people should really check out that Mega Sixty Four video just because it's it's ridiculous. I mean, of course, everything those guys make is usually pretty ridiculous, but. Yeah, it's it's one just one of those things. People just beat it with a dead horse, or beat it like a dead horse. Um, beat it beat with it a dead with, horse would be cool. <laughs> that would be, that'd be pretty fucking metal too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think with that said, we should probably try to run through some of the uh, little news topics that we wanted to to mention. Oh, yeah. uh, with you know, we're we're on the the the. The cusp of going way, way over on our podcast as per usual. So, oh well, yeah, think... so might as well we should we should rapid fire some topics here. Yeah, let's just do a little little rapid fire, and then we can spend some more time on the the things that we got a little bit more to say about. So, exactly. um, going back to Friday the Thirteenth, uh, it Friday the Thirteenth, the game that is, uh, it has been uh, released physically for consoles. Uh, so, if anybody was waiting. For Friday the 13th to come out on consoles uh, for the physical version, it is out. Definitely check it out. The game is so much fun. If you are one of the people that are sitting around waiting for the single player campaign, do not do that because this game is, whether you like multiplayer games or not, if you don't like online games at all, then just don't play the game because if you're going to play the single player version of this game, I guarantee it's not going to be anywhere even close to the quality of the the, the multiplayer experience. I, I'll eat my words if, if it ends up being different when they finally do release the single player campaign, but um, you are selling yourself so short by doing that. Cool. But with that as well, they also put out some more updates to the game, which is awesome. Uh, they added a couple DLCs that were like $2. Uh, one is a just cosmetic, like, uh, swimsuits for the characters, um, you know, just kind of a little funzy yep. thing. They also doesn't... added a, they added a new counselor too, didn't they? Yes, they added a new counselor. Uh, he is the it's like the middle aged hippie. I think it was in part two or three. I, I want to say part three, inspired by that character, anyways. And Sweet. that was with that was. A free update. They also added uh, part four Jason, which uh, you know it's just another Jason uh, you get to play as. Adds a little bit more variety. Um, and then they added a new map, which is Jarvis's house. Uh, is the name of the map, and essentially it is another map for Friday the Thirteenth, but it has a recreation of Tommy Jarvis's house from uh, part four. So that's pretty cool. You know, more variety is always nice. It's kind of a different map compared to the others, just how they do the layout. Um, but Which is you know, good. more content's always great. And then a little uh, fun 
I guess, cosmetic addition is um, they added random rain. So it doesn't like start and stop during the game, I don't think. But when you, because I, I, at least I haven't noticed, but sometimes when you play a map, it's going to be raining and sometimes it won't. And, you know, it doesn't really do much, but I, I think it's kind of neat, you know. It almost gives a different feel. Yeah, yeah, spices thing up a little bit. Um, doesn't really change power. mechanics at all, but uh, the the characters will actually look like they're wet when it's raining, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, what really sucks is I was waiting for the physical version, as we talked about several yes. times, and I had it in my Amazon cart, and I've had, like, October being a crazy month every year for games, there's, like... 12 games coming out this month that I really want. And so I figured, you know what? It's a cheaper game. It'll, when we get it at Walmart, I'll just, I'll just get it at Walmart. Mm. I don't need to be buying too much on Amazon, you know, especially with the holidays coming up. So I've been skimping on buying games because of the holidays coming up, save up some money, get some stuff paid down, this and that. And then Walmart didn't get it. Yeah. So I am without. And also I missed out on the, pre-order price of getting 20 percent off so uh, yeah well that's gonna, that's, i will get it eventually but at this point now, if they haven't got it if they don't get it at walmart i'll end up picking it up after the holidays because as of now uh i'm not planning on getting really any more games my birthday is coming up next month so any chance i have of getting any games will be then or christmas and then after that, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But uh, yeah, for, of the, you know, I want to make it a cool Christmas. So I will not just buy all the games. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and like I was going to say is, you know, don't feel bad about not getting the game physically because as a backer and somebody who paid money for the backer tier physical reward of the game has still not gotten his physical copy of the game. So that's kind of really irritating, and I can't tell you how many times I've like tweeted or posted on Facebook for Gun Media or the Friday 13th game things saying, hey, when are the backers getting their physical editions? And I've never gotten a response. Like, super frustrated. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know if it's delayed for some reason. I don't know if they shipped for some reason. Like... I think we're supposed to get a a slip co like a Kickstarter or exclusive slip cover or something. So I don't know if they're like manufacturing that, but it would be nice if I got my backer reward eventually. Yeah, that would be cool. You you think you'd get it before anybody at all, and their grandmother could buy it. I mean, I will so, say they, except me. I will say they did the right thing by when they released the game digitally that they gave all backers digital keys for the game, regardless if they backed physical or digital. So that is cool. So I've been able to enjoy the game, but you know, I would still like what I paid for and what I was promised. And it, it's just, it's another one of those situations where it kind of puts doubts on some of this crowdfunding stuff when companies do things like that. Like sometimes I can, I can understand delays and whatnot, but the game is out physically. Like, people can go and buy it, but the backers don't have their copies. It's like, what the yeah, hell? Just not me. Yeah. Just yeah. back in, just not go buy it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Friday the 13th, great. They're still supporting the game. They got a roadmap going into early next year of uh, additional characters, maps, and some other things. So that's neat. But it sounds like, uh, from what I've heard, that once they finish this planned roadmap, that they will be done with Friday the 13th. There will be no more updates after that. Maybe bug fixes or something, but nothing added to the game, and they're going to start working on something else. So that's kind of that's kind of a bummer to hear. But you know, hopefully, you know, this is a game that kind of has a small community that sticks with it. Like for the PC version, anyways. Um, community is not huge by any means, but there's no problems finding games. And it's always kind of neat with the size of the community that, you know, every few games or so you might see, oh, I've played with this person before. Or, you know, it could be a good or a bad thing, but um, 
yeah, there's definitely still people playing it. Still people who are love the game. You know, a lot of me and my friends, if you, if you take three or four of us and add our hours played together, like we easily have like a few thousand hours into this game. It's crazy. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so en- enough on Friday the 13th then. Um, a uh, couple little quick mentions uh, that I don't have m- much to say about. If you have a little bit more to add, feel free to do so. There is are- a... Oh, sorry? I said, well, we are doing rapid fire. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there is a... A couple weeks ago, there was a trailer released for a, a new Tomb Raider film, which is inspired by the Tomb Raider reboots. Which uh, I thought looked awesome in the picture I saw, and I actually, when I don't have time to watch a video, a lot of the time I'll like send it, send the link to myself on Facebook yes. Messenger to, oh, yeah. to to review later. And I absolutely cannot believe that I forgot to go back and watch this because <laughs> I was like, oh my god! But I was on my way to work, so I sent it to myself to watch with my wife later, and I totally forgot about it. <laughs> and I'm and I remember. Uh, another trailer came out that day. I don't remember what movie it was for, but we immediately watched that, and I was like, "Yes!" And then after we do that, sometimes we just like go on YouTube and just look watch up trailers. New, new trailers for movies that we might yeah. not know about or whatever. And totally didn't watch it, so I yeah. <laughs> I have no comment on this besides um, I need to watch this trailer. And there's not really a lot to say about it. It really looks like they're. I mean, they're really going for the similar style of the Tomb Raider re- reboots, like really grounded. I don't know if it's following the same story or anything. Um, they don't show too much. It's just like, okay, that looks kind of like the game. So, yeah. So I'm interested, um, you know, of course, being a huge fan of the Tomb Raider series. Um, you know, the movies, the previous movies, the first one was I thought was pretty decent. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Second one, eh, yeah, so much. But, they're okay. Um, I I don't honestly remember anything about them. I've seen both of them, but <laughs> yeah. they're not very memorable, I guess. Uh, True. But I remember I remember feeling the same way. Like the first one was like, oh cool. And they made another one. I was like, I'll go see that. And then being like, me. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw a movie tonight. That's basically my my review. I watched a movie tonight. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Um. So, yeah, new Tomb Raider trailer. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I do. Next, next thing we got here, uh, I just wanted to mention, because I've been involved with this in the past, is Indie Box, who did monthly uh, physical PC game uh, collector's editions, basically, for games that were previously digital only, had a subscription service, and they have ended, I think, as of this month, they are done doing subscriptions. They, we haven't really got much info on what they're doing going forward, but they're going to... It sounds like they're going to try to keep something going. So, essentially, before you pay $30 a month, once a month, they would send you whatever uh, collector's edition they made. Uh, I picked one up for uh, the Stanley Parable. I picked one up for Hollow Knight and the Banner Saga. So, all these games were previously digital only games and indie box makes you know basically a physical version of the game kind of like limited run in a way but theirs are more traditional kind of pc uh not necessarily big box games but the larger size box with like some extra goodies in it you typically not actually a physical version of the game itself um, it'd just be the box, some goodies, and you'd get a digital code with it. Um, they also did some other uh, releases. They did do some physical game releases themselves, like they did All Night, uh, or not All Night, All Boy, um, and a few others. So it, I, I hope that they come up with maybe like a instead of doing a subscription service, that's more like a pre order system kind of like what limited run did with uh, like ease origin or something where like hey we're gonna make this next month you know pre-order it and that's how many copies we'll make like i think that could be a good sir good service yeah because it was more like you just kind of find out when you when you're getting it well they they usually they would give you a few weeks where you could they would let you know what's coming up yeah yeah okay they usually let you know know ahead of time maybe not in the early days 
but I'm as far as I remember, they they always gave a good heads up because I never stayed subscribed. I only subscribed when they had a, ver uh, a particular game that I wanted. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So that's it, it seemed like good stuff from what you got in your cookout videos. Yeah, yeah. I think so. So, moving on to the next thing. Uh, Nintendo Creators program ends. It's live streaming on YouTube. Yes. So, that kind of sucks. Nintendo being Nintendo, I guess I'm not terribly surprised. I understand people that are upset about this, and I think they are very well justified. This whole let's play intellectual property, who can do what with the things they purchase, I think is a, a debate that will probably never go away. But yeah, I think it's ridiculous on Nintendo's part. Yeah, it's... It, it, you're making yourself look bad. Yeah. And you're selling a thing. If they bought it, if they're playing a ROM, I see, okay, maybe, maybe then you're not, they, you, you haven't made any money. I can see that being an argument point. Honestly, that doesn't bug me either. But I don't know. If I buy a Nintendo game, I'm going to play it. And if I'm going to play it, maybe I want to stream it. Right. Yeah, um, I, th I think that's my right. And if I happen to make a little bit of money, because a lot of people like the way I play a game I own, that should be okay. If you, uh, if you buy a hammer from a company and then you build a house with it, the, the hammer companies are going to be like, hey, stop it. <laughs> stop making money with that hammer that you bought from us. We don't appreciate that. We want that money. Well, then go build a house yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, uh, that, that's how. That's just kind of an example of how ridiculous that is. Yeah, and I, I know there's two sides to the debate. I, I've seen people who, you know, legally Nintendo's in the right to do this stuff because the law allows them to do so. Whether morality plays into it or just you know them being a little bitch, like it they seems, usually are, it's kind of a dick move. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. So it is what it is. I'm sure this isn't the last we've heard of this battle, but um, no, well, it isn't. It's just Nintendo's way of doing things. They like to seem like they're the happy everybody's buddy business, but in the end, they're just like everybody else, business wise. And Pretty they much. just they want their money and they want it for themselves and not anybody else to have. But yes. it's. It is what it is. It's lame, but it is what it is. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> um, then, uh, for those who have Shovel Knight on the PC, they added the Battletoads to the PC version. I think they got added to another version as well. That's pretty badass. But yeah, uh, you know, this was something that I was kind of bummed about. Because when they, they released the various versions of the game, they had different boss fights. You know, the PlayStation had the God of War or Kratos fight. Xbox had Battletoads. Was, was there another one? I can't remember. For uh, Wii or something. I don't but, remember there being something specific to the Wii one. But, but I, had the, I, had the, I have every physical version of it, so yeah. maybe, I'll have to, maybe I'll have to go and find out. So, and yeah, now you can fight the Battletoads on the PC. So that's pretty neat. I think the, 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 um, I was forget the, the tunnel, tunnel race. Oh, well, the uh, tur Turbo Tunnel. Tur turbo Tunnel, thank you. Uh, I think that is actually a piece of the, the Battletoads instance in Shovel Knight is doing a Turbo Tunnel race, but I haven't played it yet, actually. But yep. something to look out for. And it's, you know, it's free if you have the PC version. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and one thing that I just wanted to mention, just because I am such a huge fan, uh, I've talked about this long time ago. Um, there is a group, YouTube channel, podcast, you know, the whole shebang uh, called Easy Allies. And these used to be the main folks from game trailers, which if you listen to, 
the episode that I talked about this uh, last, I think it was last beginning of last year at this point. Um, I was a person, I absolutely loved game trailers for probably about 14 years. Every single day when I got home from work, first thing I would do is I'd sit down on my computer, go to game trailers, not just for the game trailers themselves, but primarily for a lot of the shows they did, and especially their retrospective series, which were these just absolutely amazingly well done, well written, well edited uh, summaries of various game series. They covered things from like Resident Evil to Legend of Zelda, Final Fantasies, um, all, all kinds of games, like surprisingly like some of the games they did retrospectives on. And it that series has now been reborn with the Easy Allies, and they uh, f- kicked it off doing a Dark Souls retrospective, which at this point they have covered uh, Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, I'd imagine. Or wait, the first one covered... Sorry, Demon's Souls, and then the second one's covering Dark Souls, and going on from there, there's two episodes available now. Definitely check it out. Uh, Even if you're a person that might not be a big fan of Dark Souls at all, this is a really great way to get a a very good look at the series, and just very well done, like almost like documentary style, not so much with like interviews and things like that, but just covering the game and talking about like some of the the finer points about what makes these games so yeah. great and interesting and unique yeah just very informative on just everything all things dark souls i think yeah. i did see a couple of their older videos where they did the retrospectives on the other games that you mentioned yeah yeah so uh, uh, some that i am so i mean when when game trailers announced that it was getting shut down uh, last year, pretty much immediately, the first thing I went and I did is I scoured the internet the best I could, because once they shut down the site, like a lot of access was lost to a lot of old content. So I went out of my way to find as many of their old retrospectives as I could and actually download them from the internet. I still have my big folder, like just tons and tons of the, these retrospective videos because they are that good. And like one of my absolutely all time favorite like pieces of content available online was the game trailers retrospectives. And it just makes me so, so happy that this series has returned. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully they keep it going and yeah. cover some more series and stuff. Yeah. What do we- um, a few other trailers, um, random bits here. So a few weeks ago, there is the Tokyo game show. Uh, a lot of cool trailers shown, but two in particular that really stood out to me that are things that I'm super excited about uh, was a trailer for the Shadow of the Colossus remake. Oh, yeah. What oh, time? Yeah. I'm looking seen pretty good. For quite a, quite a while, so it's good to see an update. Yeah, and I'd imagine probably coming up here in the next year for the, the, the North American like big game conventions, I would imagine we'll probably see a little bit more of Shadow of the Colossus remake at this point. Yeah, hopefully we'll have a release date and everything. Yeah. And hopefully it'll uh, be sooner rather than later. I'd really like to see some more on Seeker of Mana, speaking of... Yes. But I've seen nothing since the announcement trailer. And yeah. I'm super excited for it, so I want some info. And it's I also want, the, I want that announcement for the Collector's North American Edition. Collector's Edition. Damn yeah. it. Yes. Oh, man. That's probably one of my most anticipated things. Anticipating the announcement of a collector's edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm glad they announced the game. Uh, right. I, want a, I want a physical version of that game, <laughs> and I want swag to go with it. Absolutely, absolutely. Please, pretty please. <laughs> um, and then uh, one other trailer from Tokyo Game Show that I um, am super interested to see more about is called 13 Sentinels. And this is the upcoming new Vanillaware game. Uh, same art style that they use you know, for games like Odin Sphere and uh, Maramasa, Dragon's Crown, so on and so forth. Didn't show a whole lot, so I can't really comment much on it, but I gotta imagine it'll be pretty sweet. But I, I see nothing on this, but it's, it sounds like it's coming from an awesome studio, so I'll definitely be checking out a 
trailer as soon as we're done here? Tales, yes. Yeah. Speaking of trailers for awesome looking upcoming games, Red Dead Redemption 2's new trailer came out. Yeah. It's been a while now, actually, but yeah. <laughs> it, it did come out, and it was so spice. I definitely... It's hyped. Can't. Yeah, that's one of my biggest upcoming games. I absolutely love Red Dead Redemptions and Red Dead Revolver, so I am hugely anticipating this game. More so than when Grand Theft Auto's come out. I, I've, I'm really into the Red Dead Redemption. It's just such a breath of fresh air because there's not really many Western games, and the other Western games don't even hold a candle to Red Dead Redemption. So it's it's good to have a follow up that's of going to be of the same caliber. Yeah, for show. Oh, show. Um. Yeah, so I think we're trying to get low on time here. So I think we both agree that we didn't really want to talk much about the SNES Classic because it's kind of been talked to death. It's available. Yeah. Uh, it's bit, much more available and. People are tr still trying to scalp it. They're not having so much luck as they did with the NES, and that yeah. is hilarious. So that's yes. good to see that they're actually putting enough out there. Maybe not enough for everyone to get one right away, but it seems like there will be, if you've got some sort of patience, you will be able to get one. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, so. Uh, I had absolutely zero challenge getting it. I, I went to Walmart about 10 minutes before they opened got it there was four other people in line and they had 36 of them <laughs> so it was not a challenge there was not even no need to even run to the electronics department i don't work there anymore so it's not like they put one away for me yeah. and obviously they didn't need to i was anticipating at least 20 people in line especially with when i worked there how many people would bug me about it Right. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised no one's uh, bugged me about it yet, but hopefully everyone that wants one got it. And scalpers eat shit and have to slash the prices to clearance price soon yeah. when they realize that they're more readily available. Anyway, that's about it I want to say about that. Yeah, I'm, so... I'm, I'm happy it's hackable already, so that's cool. Yes, yeah. Cool. Uh, from what I've heard, I think 200 games... Is yeah, what well, it's up to now? You can put 200 Super Nintendo games on it? Yeah, you can put NES games on it too if you didn't get yeah. an NES I mean, it, it, It's essentially, it's, it is the exact same hardware. It just looks a little different as it, it what looks, they had on the NES Classic. It looks sexy because it's the yeah. Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, so uh, then I think I wanted to... Uh, don't really need to delve too much into it, but just wanted to mention the the recent news that uh, the studio Visceral is being shut down uh, effective immediately by the. I don't know. I, I was going to have some colorful insult for EA, but yeah, EA shut down Visceral. What about your DX? Which sucks. I mean, I know they haven't had any like big smash hits recently. But, you know, who can you blame for that with fucking EA's meddling? Uh, mm -hmm. So for those who aren't familiar with Visceral, for me anyways, they made my favorite horror game pretty much of all time, being Dead Space. Yeah, that's, it's going to be, there goes Amazing. our, there goes like one of the greatest series around. And Dead general. Space 2 was awesome as well. Then, of course, EA, seeing this popularity, had to you know get their grubby fingers involved with Dead Space 3, change things, try to put in microtransactions for fucking resources to craft your guns and shit. Uh, you know, had to tack on multiplayer elements, which the, the co-op element was pretty cool, but... Um, you know, they took the horror element out, away from it. It was like yeah, playing Resident Evil Five. Pretty much, pretty <laughs> much spot on. And then you know, Battlefield Hardline. You know, yeah. What happened with that? You know, uh, again. I, I like, I liked it for being different and trying something different. 
but it definitely wasn't didn't hold me as long as previous Battlefield games. That's that's what I'll say. I didn't but actually just you know chop full of microtransactions and shit again too. Yeah. So yeah. And, yeah. It sucks. And uh, with that, so just I've seen people like, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. This is how the industry goes, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Yeah. But just a few things that I think is worth, you know, mentioning that. Uh, so I found this this infographic that is called the Victims of EA. So I just want to kind of run through this real quick. And these are some of the the just absolutely amazing series that have been ruined firsthand by EA's meddling by going into these series, changing things. And, you know, some game before it comes out, oh, well, this game has to sell 12 million copies or, you know, we're going to shut down the studio, which is fucking ridiculous for, you know, especially more niche titles. But, you know, we've lost, uh, so now we lost visceral we've lost maxis you know of course they did the sim city games we know we all know what happened to the last sim city um yeah. there was uh origin who had ultima wing commander westwood command and conquer dune uh, dune uh pretty much west westwood like pretty much made the rts genre yeah uh, <laughs> You know, then there's Bullfrog, we had Syndicate, the Populous Series, Theme Park, Dungeon Keeper, uh, Dice, of course, Battlefield, you know, what else? You know, Dice, Dice oh, does there's Edge. Yeah, Dice does a lot. They're they're pretty much hired to do uh, multiplayer aspects of lots of games, like the tra Transformers games. Uh, I think Dice did on uh, one of the last Transformers games. By High Moon, they did, you know, they're doing the Battlefront series right now. So right, right, and then like uh, one shift that I didn't actually real like I knew things changed, but having more of a visual aspect to it, you can you can see the shift. Uh, Bioware, for example. So when Bioware was their own company, you know, we had games like Baldur's Gate, Mass Effect 1, Neverwinter Nights, Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. And since EA has been involved, like, you know, look what happened to Mass Effect 3, which, you know, I'm not saying I have any complaints. Uh, you know, ending could have been a little bit better, but after they went back and touched it up, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I really enjoyed Mass Effect Andromeda. But you know they keep canceling the the Bioware Star Wars games. Um, you know now yeah, they've shelved that's what they want. That's what Mass they want. Effect, and you know pretty much the way I see it is unless Anthem, which is the proposed you know next Bioware game that's coming out, if that game's not huge, Bioware's done, and that is infuriating to me because <laughs> what an amazing company, and they're yeah. going to be. Getting the one shaft strike. over one, you know, one strike, non massively strike. successful game. Like you can't have yeah. a moderately successful game. You have to be massively successful. Which, fucking yeah. EA and the people like mocking the people upset about this. Like, I just don't understand like why you are insulting the people who want integrity and quality games to come out and not be influenced by shareholders and shitty, shitty you know, changes. Like we, we talked about before we started the podcast that we didn't want to talk about this whole microtransaction debate that's going on right now. And that's like specifically tied into, to these events. And it's, it's infuriating. Like, yeah, I don't have to buy a microtransaction stuff, but for them to add all this stuff into the game, they're detracting from the game itself. And now people aren't going to buy the game because they want microtransactions. The game doesn't sell as well. They shut down the studio. Rip your favorite series. Yeah, exactly. Fuck EA. A, <laughs> yeah, just fuck their business practices. And it, it also ties into what we were talking about. Putting all your all you can into a game and getting better results. When you put in shit like this, you know how many people you turn off before they even try your game? Yeah, yeah. 
like Shot of War, I don't, there's a bunch of people who are like boycotting it just because of the stuff before even playing it. Uh, it's just a real bummer that the, you know, especially when they're locking story elements behind a paywall, basically. Like, you've heard about the game, what more do you need to do? Right, right. But I will but, say there's, there's. What pisses me off? Democracy tied in with this too, because other companies get a pass on it. Like, no, oh, I don't like it in general. No, I just or just how you do it. If right, it's this right. cosmetic crap you're buying in a little loot box, whatever. It's just how you do it. Like, if you want to buy, you know, just like CS:GO does, they've had that going for years. Right. Where you, where you buy the the loot packs and you get the different skins for the guns and the different and whatever and even Valve does it mm -hmm. with like you buy the packs and you get the hats and shit. Well, for, CS:GO yeah. is Valve. Yeah, it's Valve. Yeah, sorry, CS:GO too. Yeah, I mean, Valve's been doing it with a bunch of games, so like they get, they've been doing it too. So it's big deal. Like you can do it, but there's well, a, they're not they're stopping you from accessing content. You know? It's how it's how you do it. Yeah, and a lot of games that do that, it's more like you get it faster if you put buy it. Yeah. Lot, if you can use your in-game money, I don't see a problem with it. Where you, like it takes, you save up all these points. You can buy it. You save up your, you know, like experience. Like Gears of War does it, and it doesn't block out anything that matters. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't get the flaming gun skin. Oh well. Oh, maybe if I buy this loot box with my points I've saved up from playing multiplayer, like that's what you're going to use it in anyway. So it's just a reason to keep playing. Yeah, it keeps you playing the game longer. But if you're lazy. Go ahead and buy your way to it, right? But right. it doesn't make it doesn't give you an advantage in the game. So yeah, there's there's a good way to do it, and there's a greedy bad way. There's to do the it. EA way to do it. Yeah, exactly. EA and Activision. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. Oh man. Yeah. So that's all I gotta say on that subject. Um, and one thing that really pisses me off about the visceral thing being shut down is they were working on a Star Wars game as well. That they've now had to shuffle on to something else, and I'm sure it'll take shape some other way. But it just seems like Star Wars games are having a bad go. The one that they can only make one at a time now, it seems like. Whereas, look at like the PS2 era. There's how many? Yeah, a lot. How, how many Star Wars games come out? I think there was a Star Wars game coming out specifically for certain consoles. Like, I miss that. I miss a couple Star Wars games coming out a year. So even if one sucked, which was very rare, you're like, whatever, another one's going to come out and it'll be awesome. Whereas yeah. now it's like, if you don't like multiplayer games, well, you're missing out on Star Wars games altogether because you didn't buy a Battlefront. Right. So, yeah, there's no variety <laughs> either. It's like, oh, you got to buy this kind of Star Wars game because that's the Star Wars game that's out right now. Right. So right. They, just, they just need to, I think they need to give the, the rights to more companies than just EA. Like, don't you're just you're bottlenecking your potential yeah well and i know part of the problem too is a lot especially ea and activision is they do they do hostile takeovers of companies so a lot of time and i i know that I, I know companies can protect themselves from that happening but it's kind of, it can be tricky especially when you're you know publicly traded and things like that yeah it's, so. it's especially it's tough for the smaller companies where like even without being owned by ea right a, a, a good game or a bad game will make or break you yeah yeah so that's why a lot of the time they sell themselves to these bigger companies is kind of have to have like a, a blanket thing yep. to, to catch them if there's a, or like a safety net i mean but but now it doesn't even matter because games successful or not, there's a good chance that if you're, unless you're like a powerhouse developer, like they're probably going to shut you down. Or lay everybody off as soon as the game comes out. Yeah, which we see happen all the time. Yeah, it's, it's just really sad to see. The, the state of the gaming industry is a disaster. and It's pretty toxic. It's I mean, I know it's like more expensive to develop games but there's got to be a better way to conduct business yeah, yeah and for sure anyway speaking of games we might as well move on to our next 
Topic yeah, of, so uh, <laughs> I think uh, just for the sake of time here, we're just going to like really quickly just kind of run through the list of games coming out for October since we didn't really get a chance to talk about it in what would have been our podcast a couple weeks ago. So usually as we do, we'll just kind of mention games that we're interested in um, that are coming out you know, in the time between podcasts. Um, so this time we're just going to kind of cover the chunk of October. And October is a fat one every year. Yeah. It's always got the most games that I want. October and early November seems to have everything because they want it all out before Christmas, you know? Right. And, yeah, sure enough, they started out quick. Uh, a game that I had on pre-order for about a year that was originally a Kickstarter game is now available, uh, Battle Chasers Night War, which is uh, essentially kind of like a JRPG-inspired it's a Western game uh, based on a comic graphic novel series. Uh, looks pretty sweet. Uh, I had a friend that played through it, and he said he really enjoyed it. So I look really? forward to that. Oh, yeah, it looks really cool, too. I snagged it. It's uh, Sweet. Yeah, it's, yeah your, your recent pickup. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, it was, it was stuff. it's a cheap game. Like, why not? Yeah. Uh, also, we got Shadow War came out, as we spoke of. Yes, uh, I'm looking forward to that still, even with the microtransaction bullshit going on. Maybe they'll <laughs> do something with it. Also, Evil Within 2 came out, if you're a horror fan. I've heard it's better than the first one, so yeah, maybe, maybe that might be what I'm hearing. Maybe that'll make it a, a second chance for you to try out the series and see if you still hate it or not. Yeah. Well, I don't hate it. I well, just, yeah, it was just, it just was disappointed. Wasn't. Yeah, it was just overhyped. Overhyped is like being like the savior of the yes. survival horror channel. Uh, I thought know. it was generic as shit. Yeah. Uh, also, for wrestling game fans, WWE 2K18 came out. Uh, I'm indifferent to that. I still like playing the games, but I will wait till I can get it for a steal. Like last year's, I got it for 20 bucks. So, something like that. Mm hmm. Uh, what else caught your eye? Uh, so a few other things here. Um, I haven't checked it out too much myself, but I hear A Hat in Time is supposed to be really awesome. It's a platformer. Uh, I think it, I believe it's only on Steam at this time, but well, I've been hearing pretty much nothing but good things about that. Okay, I was going to say I hadn't heard anything about it, but then it being a PC game, that probably... Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> it's, it's under my radar, I guess. Uh, um, I've heard some pretty good things about Tiny Barbarian DX, but I think that game might just be a port. For the Switch? Yeah, unless yeah. I'm wrong. Or yeah, unless it's a Switch it, it, exclusive. I think it is a Switch exclusive. Okay. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, sure, also, sure. also, a game we previously talked about, I think it was in our... Uh, what was it? Our E3 video? was uh, uh, Elix was like a cool looking upcoming game and it came out a lot faster than I anticipated. Yeah. So I have snagged it because it was a, a little bit cheaper of a title. So I look forward to trying it. It's a cool open world, uh, kind of like a weird, a different type of post-apocalyptic yeah. uh, game where it's like a more fantasy elements to it. Uh, it's also made by the developers of the Risen and uh, Gothic series, so it's... I don't know, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and obviously we were talking about South Park. Is that yes, nice? of course. Get on that. Um, Do it. A couple other ones here. Uh, so I have been hearing some, in, some good things about Knights of Azure 2, which, of course, is a follow-up to Knights of Azure, which came out last year. And it was kind of like a me mediocre, like kind of like action RPG ish. Uh, yes, yeah, like I have it. It's loaded on my PS4, and I have yet to try it because I I got it during the time I wasn't able to play much. But sure, it has and it piqued my interest even with what I heard about it. Like art style and everything looks pretty cool, but I hear the the gameplay uh, from a a reviewer that I I really take Trust. his. I trust his opinions. And the cool thing about him, um, I, and I have a tr hard time saying his name. Uh, I believe he's, I, I, I'm not sure, 
where he's from. Uh, he has a very heavy accent. It's like Brerorius Kaczynski or something like that, or Kriansky. I don't know how to say his name. I apologize if I doubt he's ever going to listen to this. Anyways, but essentially uh, a lot of these, um, the Japanese import games that we get, he actually does reviews on these games like a year before. Like sometimes, it's t I think he typically covers these games when it's announced that they will be getting an English port eventually. Oh, okay. So, so he just plays the Japanese versions or whatever? He plays the Japanese versions and, you know, he can read Japanese and everything. So it's cool to get that early look at these games. And the, a few of the games that I have played that he's talked about, um, I agreed with most of what he said. Um, and it sounds like Knights of Azure 2 is a pretty big improvement. Not maybe might not necessarily be like game of the year material by any means, but you know, uh, I, I dig the art style and everything. So, you know, that's always a big selling point for me, especially if the game's decent. Um, a couple other ones. I know a lot of people are very familiar with these, but, uh, you, you missed a couple of the, the, the biggest hitters of this month, which is of course is going to be, uh, well, I don't really care for it too much. Assassin's Creed origins, and I know the one people are most excited about, it seems, is Super Mario Odyssey. And, oh, I am very excited. I have it on pre-order. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, uh, Wolfenstein to the new Colossus. Uh, but Definitely. don't forget, Bubsy the Wool is straight back. What? It's also coming out this month. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Cancel hype, your all... Mario pre-orders and get on that Bubsy quick. Direct all hype that way. <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors is also out on Friday. I almost oh, yes, that. that's, right. that's right. So if you're a fan of the Warriors type game or a fan of Fire Emblem, maybe maybe try it out. It's out on the 3DS and the Switch, so you got options. Unless you don't have a new 3DS, then you can't play it. Yeah, unfortunately. Bummer. Yeah. But yeah, that's it for what's coming out. Uh, what you got coming up? In the next uh, little while. Yeah, so I think I will probably be jumping into South Park uh, hopefully tomorrow. Or, you know, Whenever I get this podcast uploaded, at least by that point, I shall have started South Park. Uh, really, that's my main thing, that maybe getting this pickup video taken care of. It would be nice to upload a video. It's been a while. Um, and then hopefully I can get my game room moved over and start kind of spicing it up a little bit. I got... I got nothing like too crazy for design ideas, but I think some of the like collection shelves that I'm going to do will be pretty neat and fun to do. Do time showcase. lapse. Time yeah. lapse. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, so how about you? Oh, well, I'll be finishing South Park immediately tonight. Uh -huh. I'll beat it all. All tonight sure. before, before I go to bed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just continue on with the games that I mentioned that I'd started. Uh, I beat Ra Raiden 5, but uh, uh, I'm going to keep digging into the pile. I'm gonna, I am gonna. want to switch to some older stuff, too, since I've been picking up old and new stuff, especially when I was down in the cities with you. Mm -hmm. I, I picked up a, a lot of older stuff, uh, varying from everywhere from Super Nintendo to Master System to PS2 and Xbox. So I got quite a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, and sure. uh, you know we're getting ready for Halloween, so I'll be doing a bunch of that kind of stuff, and no, yeah, that's about it. It should take me right up until our next podcast, which is hopefully in two weeks. Hopefully in two weeks, I think. I think that's that's going to be the goal. Let's, let's try let's to go. be a little bit more consistent. But you know, like we said, we've had some things going on, and yeah, well, it's enough of that. Hashtag. Podcast uh, packed. We'll do that. Podcast packed. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. Podcast. So um, then, I guess with that said, I just want to let everybody listening know how they can get a hold of us. If they don't already know, uh, of course, uh, we get up well, this podcast originally on SoundCloud. So if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, if you look to your right, you will see the links to all of our all of our 
pages, I guess, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter for myself and for Corpse Flood. And then also uh, Surflin One's links are included on there as well. And then, of course, you can go on YouTube and Facebook and just look us up. The Game Grinder, Corpse Flood Gaming, and you will find us. And, of course, as always, we appreciate your comments. Leave us a comment, and maybe we'll talk about it on the next episode. And, yeah. you know, give us feedback. You know, let us know your thoughts. If you don't want us to read comments, that's totally fine, too. Just hit us up. Communicate. Yeah. You know, we're trying to have a conversation here. Maybe berate us and motivate us into making more videos. Make us feel missed for a little bit. Maybe we'll uh, it'll, we'll strive to be more active. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. But yeah, uh, appreciate you know any feedback whatsoever, and of course we appreciate everybody listening. So yeah. Yeah, that will continue it. to do so, and we will continue to be happy that you do. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so then I guess with that being said, that will do it for this episode of the Game Tenants Podcast. And we will We're talk to you guys next time. We're out. Peace.